Kay. I'm a senior keeper here at Stone Zoo. I'm Kathy. I'm also a senior keeper here at Stone Zoo. And we have Mato here. And Kathy is going to do some training with him. So we have our similar Mato. block set up here. And Mato, that's what we use as a chute. So she's trying to get him to come over and go into the chute. So you can see he's kind of pressed up against the fence there, and that's pretty important for being in the chute, because if we want to give a hand injection, we can easily stick the syringe in and give a vaccine. I'm gonna give him a nice reward once he stays still. Not just sticking, good boy. He's just really food motivated, that's why he's not really listening right now, but that's okay. So training is voluntary with all of our animals, so if they don't want to participate in the session, that's okay. But since he is food motivated, he will work for food. So we always try to end on a positive note, and we try to keep our training session short, no more than 10 minutes. So I'm going to let him back with the rest of his family now. It's easy to work them when they're alone. I know, all that buddy. Sure. from Eureka, California. He's part of the SSP, the Species Survival Plan. She came to us from Frog Zoo. So they had two puppies who are coming in right now. That is Izzy, the daughter. These guys were born in 2018. So these guys can live in big family groups. There can be up to 12 individuals. They're pack hunters, so they, uh, they stay together even after they uh, have the first litter. So they're going to teach these pups. Here comes Milo now. He just came in the back. So they're going to teach these pups how to raise their next, their next litter of puppies. And that way when they go off on their own, they'll learn how to, how to have their own families. And you can see they're very motivated. <laughs> so this is one of the behaviors they know, which is why they do this quite often. They know how to stand up. So this way we can look at their bellies. Um, we did that when Valencia was pregnant. We were able to check her belly and make sure everything was developing well. Off, 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 <laughs> both of you. So you can tell Izzy apart from Milo because she has a white patch on her chest and also on her stomach. Again, a good view there. She's also a little bit smaller than Milo. These guys are very vocal. You might hear them make some noises. That's actually how they communicate. They live in the underbrush in Central America. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask at any time. So these guys, they, uh, they're in the underbrush, so they listen to those sounds to uh, find each other. And if you see, they have webbed feet. So let's get Valentia to stand up. You can maybe be able to see. see their feet there. They have webbed feet, so they're actually really good swimmers. So sometimes what they do is half the pack will chase the prey into the water and the other half will be waiting there to meet them to, to catch them. So what we're feeding them right now is they're getting meat and a little bit of canine chow. And they also get mice once a week, which is their favorite snack. They actually love toys as well. So as you saw in the back there, there's a couple of balls. It's actually one of their, their toys there. So we'll sometimes put them feet in the ball. Sometimes we'll give them uh, scent enrichment. They're really good with uh, different smells. Sometimes we'll give them uh, straw from another animal that they might find in their, in their own habitat, like uh, the agoutis, for example. 
And they also love logs. They tend to drag them all around. They try to bring them into their den boxes. And they're very strong. Yeah, they even like to play tug war with each other. They do. And they're so strong, they can actually take down a taper. All right, so we do have some questions coming through. Um, Lynn would like to know, what do they eat? So as Faye was just saying, here we give them meat, mice, and kibble. And in the wild, they'll typically eat some small mammals, birds, some reptiles. All right, Sam would like to know, where is their natural habitat? It's a good question, Sam. These guys are actually from South and Central America. They like to live in rainforests, but they can also be found in grassy fields and mountains. Zoraida would like to know what are their genders? Good question, Zoraida. So let's go, so we'll go in order. So that's Mato over there. He's the dad. This is Valencia Mom. That goes, that's the daughter here, Izzy, and that is Milo the son. Uh, Chris would like to know, do they smell bad? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Um, these guys don't really have too much, oh, oops. These guys don't have too much of an odor to them. Um, they do uh, scent mark with their urine. Um, but other than that, they really don't have too much of a strong odor. Matthew would like to know, is it a canine? Yes, they are a part of the canine family. Their closest relatives are Maine wolves. And as Kathy said before, they have different kinds of vocalizations, but one of them is not um, howling. They don't actually howl like wolves do. It's mostly high-pitched yips and whistles. Uh, Kenneth wants to know, how long you guys have been uh, working here? Uh, I've been here for four years. Um, I've only worked with these guys. We've had them for two years now, so Faye and I have both been their trainers for two years. And um, I've also been here for four years. I actually started at Franklin Park Zoo. I worked there for about a year, and then I came here to work at Stone. Tracy wants to know where can they be found at Stone Zoo? Okay, Tracy, so these guys are in what we call the Caribbean Coast. So once you come in our ex entryway exhibit, you'll see the flamingos. It's a big, colorful exhibit. You can't miss it. And if you follow either path on the other side of that, you will see them just beyond the, uh, just behind the flamingos. Um, Lynn would like to know, what is the word for the offspring and how long will they stay with their parents? So, um, offspring are called pups, just like normal dogs. And they would stay with their uh, family for about a year, year and a half. And that's when they would go off and start their own family. And um, ideally, in their family, there would already be uh, a couple litters of pups that were born after them so that the older pups would get to see how to raise younger pups so that they know what to do when they have their own. And they can have anywhere between one and six pups during any litter. Nuri wants to know, are they bears? <laughs> no. They look quite like bears, but they're actually canines. So these guys are related to dogs. Uh, Maya would like to know how closely uh, they are actually related to the domestic dog. Uh, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, they're pretty close. These actually are one of the few canines that has never been domesticated. There's never been any, any attempts to domesticate them. In fact, they're very rare in the wild. Um, they like to sleep in dens, so it's actually really hard to find them. Um, you could walk over a bush dog den and you wouldn't even know it. In fact, at one point they thought they were extinct um, when they found some bones in a cave in Brazil. They thought it was an extinct species, but then they found out that they were actually just all around this, under, they were underground. Um, Para wants to know why they are named bush dogs. So that's because they actually live in the underbrush or the, or the bush of the forest. So what they do is they, uh, they live in where it's really thick and bushy, um, and that helps, that's where their, uh, their squealing and their scent marking really helps. So when they're trying to hunt or trying to find their dens, what they do is they, they map out the same path. So they'll run in sort of laps, really. And that pats down pathways for them. And then they can scent mark to let the other dogs know where they are. All right, Lynn wants to know how old the pups are. 
The pups were born in November 2018, so they're about a year and a half old. Uh, Zoraida would also like to know, do they usually travel in packs? Is it rare to find a lone one, like a lone wolf? So they normally will travel in packs. Uh, once the pups will set out, though, they're usually, they can be found on their own until they find their own families. So they'll start out in a big family unit like this, and then when it's time for them to go off on their own, they'll go and find other lone dogs and then start their own packs. All right, and how long do they live again? They can live between 10 to 15 years. So I'll give you guys some ages. Um, Mato, the dad, he is seven years old. Valentia, the mom, she is four years old. And as you know, the pups are a year and a half. All right, so I think we are just about out of time. But if you guys have any other questions, feel free to add those into the comments and we can do our best to get back to you and answer those questions later. If you guys have any pups at home, check out our uh, website. You'll find some cra arts and crafts activities for all the kids. And if you check our website, you'll find a donation page. So if you want to get these guys some new toys or new enrichment, you can uh, donate there to help that cause. Thanks for tuning in to today's Zoo to You, and be sure to join us tomorrow at 1.30 for another Zoo to You. Bye!